One sec. Just a jiffy. There we go. Oof. Oh dear. Oh dear. Bucky Larson. Born to be a star. It's not for me though. No, it's not for me. It's for, uh, yeah, it's for someone else. Did you ever do that? You know, you're at the video store or maybe the record store and the employee behind the counter has a, a degree of credibility that you're like, no, I cannot be seen renting or buying this deeply inferior product. We've all done it, <laughs> ashamedly. But more about that later. Because for now, we need to take you inside the video store. You're back, you crazy people. Gluttons for punishment, I say. Thank you for watching last week. Um, ridiculous amount of people spent the time watching it. Uh, thank you very much. Wonderful comments. Uh, just quite overwhelming, really, uh, and quite humbling. So thank you very much. But we have a job to do. We have brand new films in. These films have all come into the video store this week. And hopefully by this weekend they'll be out on loan. But I'll give you a first look as to what has come in. There are two films this week I'm supporting on both DVD and, and Blu-ray. DVD being the pr premiere format, whether you like it or not. Uh, not the preferred format, but the premiere format, because, you know, the stats don't lie. DVD still outsells uh, Blu-ray in both the UK and America, which is, is shocking, but that's the way it is. It's a cheaper format. It's, it's, a, it's a good price. It's, you know, times are tight. So, you know, there's good reason for people to, some people, to prefer a DVD over a Blu-ray. Let's not argue about it. Um, but instead, let's have a look at Ackerman and The Lost Kingdom. Uh, out this week, not my cup of tea. I am not a, a comic book movie guy by any account. Uh, however, I'm certainly not going to diss those people that do love these movies. And there are a lot of those people. Um, you know... Life is short, and, and I'm not going to become a kind of Martin Scorsese and, and call them uh, not real movies, because we shouldn't be disagreeing about what we all find entertaining. We should just be content in what entertains us and what we love, and, um, you know, we shouldn't have to take to the internet to demean people who like things that we don't necessarily find to be... Uh, our cup of tea. Um, up next, we've got a really quality film. It's uh, Anatomy of a Fall. Again, Blu-ray and DVD. Uh, it's a French legal drama, uh, winner of the Palme d'Or this year in Cannes. Uh, five nominations of the Oscars as well. It's it's a great film. It's a very good film. Thoroughly recommended. Obviously, it's it, it's it's French. There is a still a a, a barrier with a lot of people watching foreign language films, which is fine, you know, everything isn't for everybody. Um, but yeah, th that's, that's so good. I, I still have to stick a, a, a little blue subtitle sticker on these uh, that I robbed from Blockbuster when they closed down um, because unfortunately people do like to know ahead of time that the film they're renting is subtitled. Um, but you know, either way, it, 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 it's a great film. And I hope that uh, it justifies my decision to get it on Blu-ray and DVD. Finally, this week in the brand new 2023 movies, we have Monica. Uh, again, we don't have many average films here. This is superb. It received an 11-minute standing ovation at the Venice Film Festival. It's a powerful family-themed drama about identity and in my opinion i think it contains some of the best performances of the year today it's, it's a remarkable film and definitely uh, deserves your attention on home video um swinging on to the boutique blu-ray releases this week uh four titles of note wait till next week next week's insane uh this week though we have a beautiful thing uh which is just an impeccable coming-of-age film set in South London against a musical backdrop that consists primarily of um, Mamakas 
and the mamas and the papas as well. Um, it's kind of the utopian adaptation of Jonathan Harvey's play. He's a scouser. He adapted it himself, hence why it's so perfect. It's an essential release. I've had it on DVD here for some years, and this upgrade is overdue, but very, very welcome. A gorgeous, gorgeous film. Um, last week we had an entry into the Studio Canal Vintage Classic section. This week we have another one. Uh, it's the Comedy Man, Kitchen Sink, kind of. Again with Kenneth Moore, who plays a struggling actor in Swinging London, and he finds that age is rapidly becoming his enemy. Um, not the most cheerful film, but it's really good. It is good, and it's great to see it on Blu-ray with some fine new extras. I had this on Blu-ray anyway, courtesy of, I think it's the Aussie release or something, but um, this, this release from 101 of Abel Ferrara's Fear City is well worth picking up, does it? Smattering of, uh, of new special features, which is great, and also, of course, it's the uncut version of the movie. Not a great fan of these editions from 101. Kind of, you, you get this slip cover, which isn't an O card, and it's not a hard box. It's kind of a cross between the two, uh, and I don't really get it. But, you know, it's a great film, and any Abel Ferrara film that's getting some HD attention is definitely worth your time. Um, finally, on the fresh produce this week, we have Nightmares in a Damaged Brain, uh, coming in from Severin, who have now set up a UK arm of their distribution company, which is great to see. Um, yeah, a brilliant film uh, by um, Romano Scavolino, who also directed the excellent Dog Tags, which I have here from Vinegar Syndrome. Um, it, it's a grim grim sick and depraved movie that actually led to the imprisonment of distributor david hamilton grant when it originally came out on vhs in this country remarkable really uh i had it already in this edition as part of the 88 films slasher classics collection but this new version from severin has five hours of bonus features including an audio commentary with fx wizard cleve hall that's moderated by the iconic filmmaker, David Dakota. What more do you need? Do you know the best part about working in a video store? Is that every customer that comes in, you do not know what they're gonna rent. And that's just, you, you can't replace that. Every every person, every customer, the, the time that they bring up something to the counter is it's always a complete surprise always a complete surprise and it's great and I love looking back at the past week and this week's been one of the busiest I've had in probably a decade I love looking back at the past week and seeing the films that people have rented um, I mean predominantly it is quite geared towards the cult and sort of the horror side of things but you know I think it's a real uh, diverse mix of movies and uh, I think it's quite cool to see and the majority of these aren't streaming either but I picked 10 anyway and these are the 10 most interesting rentals of the past week first up we have The Blob uh, directed by Chuck Russell remakes can be a little bit mm, but this is a good one a really good one of course the original was with Steve McQueen uh, this is as good I, I think it will could be I think it will could great Gore effects, brilliant. Practical makeup effects, excellent, excellent. That's the blob. Now this is a perennial renter, going out week in, week out. Peter Jackson's Brain Dead, mainly for availability reasons. After all, it's not on Blu-ray. Rumors have long been going on that he's going to remaster it someday, uh, but that's yet to happen. And for now, it's not streaming. Uh, likewise with Meet the Feebles and Bad Taste, the other two films from this era. Uh, Brain Dead is brilliant. Again, it's it's a gore-soaked delight. And people know that they can't get it anywhere else, so they're renting it from here. And it, it's pretty much out on loan permanently, which is great to see. Uh, and still, it's, it's, it's in good condition, which is a weird thing. I'm dreading the day it comes back and it's scratched or damaged. Or It does happen. People tend to... One guy cooked a DVD once. 
Yeah. Um, Salesman. This rented out this week. Brilliant film. The Maisels Brothers. You may well know from their amazing documentary, Grey Gardens, about 73 time. Uh, this is prior to that. This is 69, I think it was. And it concerns a group of daughter door Bible salesmen. Um, doesn't sound the most compelling stuff, but it's one of the earliest examples of flying a wall documentary. It is completely gripping um, and one of my favorite documentaries of all time. I think it's an essential watch. I'm so glad that someone rented it. It's probably been dormant now for about five or six years. So it's good to see the interest uh, that it's had from someone. Um, one that is available on streaming, I think this is on BFI player, but with no extras. Uh, is the Devils, Ken Russell's film. Um, again, very controversial. Warner Brothers today don't seem too excited about releasing it. Uh, I don't think that will happen. It seems like it's locked in a vault and it will remain there forever. Reasons being for that are long and complex. I will spare you my theory, but this is great to see it renting. Ken Russell, vastly underrated director. His films here don't rent as much as they should do. I should do something on him in a later episode, perhaps. Brilliant edition, double disc, DVD from the BF5. There's a great commentary on there from Ken himself, moderated by Mark Kermode. Um, yeah, it's, it's well worth a look and certainly lives up, lives up to the hype. Massage Parlor Murders is superb, wonderful edition from Vinegar Syndrome. Jake has rented this this week. Hello. Uh, you haven't seen it yet? Not yet. He, he's going to love it. I can't wait for him to return this and tell me what he thinks. Because, uh, yeah, just any New York-based sleaze fest is, well, it, it's worth watching, quite frankly. Um, a little bit of a change in gear with Old Joy, Kelly Reichardt's film. Kelly Reichardt at the moment is causing great waves because she's a, an impeccable director with some amazing films. Her new film is renting like gangbusters so a lot of my customers who are renting her new film are going back in time to see the film she made prior to that old joy is one of the best of those starring will oldham aka bonnie prince billy it's a wonderful story admittedly not think much happens in it but that's kind of the charm uh and yeah i would definitely recommend it i know this is a a little bit of an obscure one, to be honest. It's not streaming, and I think the DVD is out of print as well. So, uh, one to think about. Right back to Sickness and Gore, we have Frank Henenlotter's Bad Biology. Likewise with Nightmares in the Damaged Brain that we featured at the start of the show. It is part of the new Severin UK brand, which is great to see. Uh, I mean, the extras on this are far and wide. Uh, it's on a weekly rental as everything is in this store and it would probably take you a week just to see the special features very funny film very um, sexually provocative but it's great absolutely brilliant highbrow Richard III Laurence Olivier Shakespeare uh, one of my guys has been after this for quite some time so he was thrilled to be able to rent it um, again Sadly, it's on the network label. Network went under last year, which was a massive hammer blow for the home entertainment business in the UK. Stunning company, been around for decades. Released some films that otherwise would never have seen the light of day. So I'm guarding my network section with my life at the moment because uh, I can't see... Some of the assets will be picked up and distributed by another company, but the majority will not. Um, and that will be all we have left, which is a shame. But yeah, that's well worth a look. Finally, 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 two from the Far East. We have Sonny Sheba uh, in the Executioner collection, which is great. Arrow, brilliant uh, edition. And also one blast from the past, but it's about 10 years old, I think. Mm, no, 15, 16. Machine Girl, which is a uh, sort of really intense Japanese gore. I mean, like this is gore with a hose, a jet hose, a jet wash. It's just crazy, but it's brilliant fun on the old Cine Asia Extreme label. Good to see some Far Eastern cinema going out. Uh, and yeah, just great to see so many weird and wonderful movies being rented this week. 
And that's the thing. Next week there will be another 10 for me to pick. And they will be completely different films. And things that I have no idea uh, that people will be looking for. But that's, that's just part of the fun. Great to look forward to. New segment, everybody. It's Gaz. Hey. <laughs> um, this is Gaz. He's my longest serving, most loyal customer. He's been a, a member here for 15, 16 years. 16 years. 16 years, Just outrageous. Uh, and, and one year, one fabled year that the kids for many generations will talk about. He rented 370 films. It was, it was, it was just over. It was yeah. 372 or 373 films. I was logging them on Letterboxd. Letterboxd. Yeah. Crazy. I know. Madness. Yeah. Misspent youth. Um, this is true, but you might not believe me because you might think that this is just my bedroom and I don't have any real customers, but it's true. Gaz is a real customer. And to prove it, I'm going to ask him four questions that only the most loyal customers of Snips would know. You ready? I'm ready. I hope you're ready. Reason. Question one. Yes. What was the name of the predecessor to Snips? The shop next door, whose owner retired, thus providing Snips with its initial rentable core of films. I do know. That would have been known as the Video Butcher. It was the Video Butcher. And yeah. why? Stupid question. Why was it called the Video Butcher? I believe it was called the Video Butcher because... The guy next door sold meat, and he loaned films out. <laughs> this is correct. And what did the video smell of? The video smelled a little bit like beef. It could have been pork, actually. And you're now? I'm now a vegetarian. Correct. And that's the reason why. It was all thanks to those VHS tapes all those years ago. Oh, grim, 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 grim. Um, what film was the earliest, or had the earliest catalogue number at Snips, which was catalogue number 1001? 1001. That would have been speed. It was speed. It was speed. And finally, the key question. What was my dad's favourite film? I know what your dad's favourite film was. It starred Sidney Poitier and it was called In the Heat of the Night. And how many people did he recommend it to every year? I would have, I would say well, at least 365. <laughs> it was one a day. One yeah. a day. He yeah. even recommended it to me and I rented it <laughs> on his recommendation. <laughs> you were in it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Exactly. Brilliant. Um, yeah. You've been busy recently, as always, renting films. Yeah. What have you seen recently that you would recommend to the good people? I have. I actually took out a documentary, as you know, mm -hmm. and this is called... The War You Don't See, which is a John Pilger film, a uh, documentary, which is absolutely fantastic. It's a, an in-depth look in the way in which the media manipulates the message that the consumers that the consumers view and the consumers hear, and it goes right the way through wars, certainly the wars in Iraq, you know, the wars in the Middle East, and it goes right the way through to the likes of Julian Assange and WikiLeaks and some of the revelations that came out thereabouts and uh, and it really is it really it's really an eye-opening documentary and an absolutely fantastic piece of work and john pilger is a great document good documentarian ah uh, uh, he's one of the best yeah we've got about uh, what, 30 of his documentaries over there in the documentary section and yeah. everyone is an absolute banger as the kids say they are today. they are they are indeed um, and, that, well, and that, that is that is no that is no difference so good so good mm. he will be much missed what about next this is a film called uh, Man From Earth, which not a lot of people have seen, not a lot of people know about, but it's uh, it is by Jerome. It's a story by Jerome Bixby, who's famed with Twilight Zone and Star Trek, and it's an incredible. I suppose it's under the, under the under the title of sci-fi, although mm. it's not exactly a rip roaring roller coaster of a ride. But it um, it's a one location film, and it it all centres around this guy who is leaving his post as a lecturer in a university or a college for example and um, all of his colleague co-workers come in and they want to say goodbye to him and they ask him why he's leaving and he decides that for the first time in his life he's going to reveal why he's leaving and he says that he has to move on every 10 years because if he doesn't people start to realize that he doesn't age and the reason why he doesn't age is because he's been on the earth for the last 14,000 years, which sounds absolutely far-fetched, and you have to suspend disbelief on this one, but it's absolutely incredible, thought-provoking. Oh, it's a conversation starter, and we've had many. We have had many, and it's a film that really more people should see, and hopefully, really is. with this episode, they might well do that. You've just returned a film. 
I have indeed. Uh, and you actually put the films back in the boxes yourself. I, I do. I, is, I wonder if I'm the only person that does that. You are the only person that does that. <laughs> but it's very nice. It's very nice. It saves my legs. It's at it least a 10 foot walk. And I take um, the on loan tag off as well. You do. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you've just returned network Sydney Lumet brilliant film I've just plucked out of the Sydney Lumet section it's such a good movie and there it is yeah yeah and such a good section as well oh. Sydney Lumet is one of my favorites and uh yeah as I say is I mean his first film uh his directorial debut actually 12 Angry Men it, this amongst probably my all-time favorite films mm -hmm. and uh and network isn't that far behind to be honest with you 1976 it is again it's a little bit on the theme with the war that you don't see it's all about the network and how the network is manipulating those that work within them purely for the desire of higher ratings mm. and it's incredible it's, it really is an incredible incredible character piece and peter finch who uh, stars in the main role it, i mean it is an absolutely knockout performance and uh, sadly he died a year later after the film was made and um, and it, his death uh, was around about two months before mm. he was posthumously awarded an oscar and then became the first actor, I believe, to be posthumously awarded an act, uh, an Oscar, yeah, um, and right. rightly so as well, because it was an absolutely incredible performance. Oh. oh, it's unbelievable! Yeah, brilliant, Excellent. brilliant. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me in the chair. Gaz has an alter ego, which is from Over the Water, which is his uh, his, his musical musical um, pursuit. And if you look below, you can see all the links to Gaz's work, his new album, which is really good. Shameful, shameful, shameful. And um, yeah, you can you can play it, download it, buy it, and absorb it. And uh, thank you for coming in. Thank you very much for having me. That's great. We all like a competition, don't we? Free stuff. We want some free stuff. Take some free stuff. Why not the Urban Legend um, Blu-ray box set from Eighty Eight Films? Three films, Urban Legend, Urban Legend 2, Urban Legend 3, and Urban Legend 3 even has an audio commentary from myself and Matty Budrevich, where we're joined by director Mary Lambert, of Pet Cemetery fame, who tells us all about the film. It's, it's a lovely box set, three great films. And we also have, it's now out of print, we have Replicant, the Jean-Claude Van Damme film, which has a triple dose of Dave Wayne, poor you. Is this a prize or is this a punishment? I don't know. But we have a booklet in there that, that we wrote, uh, a commentary that we did, and it's got our first feature-length documentary, the 76-minute look at the life of cinematographer Mike Southern. As I say, this is out of print. You will be paying like 25 quid for it if you want it. Um, but yeah, you can have it for nothing. But what do you have to do? Well, you'll see a still. I thought, I thought, I thought I'm going to be cruel. I'm going to do something really, um, yeah, really difficult. But some of you might get it. But I've tried it on a couple of customers, including Jake over there. And it's been a tough one. So this is your chance. You'll see a still coming up on screen shortly, which you might want to pause. One of the films in the SNPs BSI section, which is basic store inventory, has been removed. You need to tell me which one. Now, the BSI section is exactly what it says it is. It's the, it's the meat and potatoes of the video store. So there's no genre movies, there's no boutique labels, there's no world cinema. It's literally just your standard action, comedy, drama type fare. They're also filed in strict alphabetical order. Okay, here's the still, and you'll see a Snips logo box, spine, and that's the film that's missing. So here's the still. Take a good look. I'll pick two winners at random. Uh, if two of you get it right, with the quickest correct answer, they will take the pick of their prize. It's open to entrance right across the world, and the only stipulation is um, that can you please subscribe to my channel when you enter many thank yous good luck and the winners will be announced on episode three so what was i going on about at the start of the show this whole it's not for me kind of thing i don't know it's just something that 
rankles with me a little bit the way people fear that they're going to be judged on the film that they take um which yeah we should never feel ashamed by stuff that we like it's true you know i said about the fear the intimidation caused by maybe an employee who's certainly got a uh, a sneering look about them but that is not me uh, and i'll tell you why i recorded the audio commentary for i'll always know what you did last summer probably one of the critically most reviled films of the franchise certainly of that era of slasher films so i'm certainly no harbinger of great taste i like what i like and uh, i don't care what people think so i picked five films that people have brought to me over the last say 15 years where they've apologized for renting it and i'm going to state why they should not apologize for renting a film because you shouldn't just I hate the word guilty pleasure as well. Guilty pleasure. Don't feel guilty about pleasure. Don't feel guilty about watching something that you're going to enjoy. It doesn't matter. There's no barometer. There's no rule book to say that you have to rent films that are 7.0 on the IMDb and above. You know, you can find joy. You can find satisfaction out of so many different films. Uh, and really, we should all be a little bit less bothered about what people think about our choices. So first up, this film swept the raspberries uh, this year. Um, and it's Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. Uh, a couple of people have apologised for renting this to me. Um, and they shouldn't. Is it a good film? Not particularly. But you have to admire it. You have to admire that it was made. You have to admire the ingenuity, the entre entrepreneurialism, uh, and just the desire to kind of get 20 grand together, make something like this, which isn't bad. Technically, it's, 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 it's fine as a film. Um, and to achieve the success that they've achieved with this, raking in millions at the box office, uh, should be applauded, uh, to be honest. So for that reason alone, I would not apologize to anybody for renting this film, because as curiosity value goes, um, it's, it's worth a look. And there's a sequel could be out in a couple of months, I think. Yeah. Secondly, another film that people continually say, well, this is not for me well why not because it should be it's showgirls <laughs> you know i remember watching this in a cinema um alone <laughs> i don't think anyone was in the cinema with me um because it was just oh when it was released it was just it was mucked mercilessly but fast forward almost 30 years and vinegar syndrome have just released a lavish 4k blu-ray set and it's considered a cult classic. And it is. It's Paul Verhoeven, for Christ's sake. You know, one of the greatest directors of all time. And yes, critically, perhaps, it does have its flaws. A um, few performances are a little bit um, excessively acted. But as a, as a standalone film, it's such immense fun. And I, I get a lot out of this. And I don't think anybody should have any issue with renting it. It's great fun. Next up is Adam Sandler. People, for some reason, have a rabid disdain for anything Adam Sandler makes. That's fair enough. Comedy is very subjective. You know, comedy is very subjective. We don't all laugh at the same thing. But, you know, Adam Sandler is currently the highest paid actor in Hollywood. It's crazy. But he is. And, you know, something like That's My Boy, someone once rented this off me and said, you know, honestly, I, I can't believe I'm renting this, but my partner wants to watch it, so I will have to watch it. Um, but don't be sorry, you know? You can laugh at Adam Sandler films. They're funny. Happy Gilmore, hilarious. Um, Jack and Jill, less so. But still, you know, embrace mediocrity. We can laugh at stuff like this. You know, just because we're older now doesn't mean we can't, laugh at something incredibly juvenile why not you know life is too short next up Birdemic wildly considered one of the worst films ever made but you got to remember that nobody sets out to make a bad film nobody and that's certainly the t case with James Nguyen never set out to make a bad film I think he was quite upset when it came out and people started laughing at it at the, at the theatre um it is really bad, 
but you can get a lot of enjoyment from this. I hate the term, you know, best worst movie that kind of belongs to Troll 2 and stuff like that. But, you know, no one sets out to make a bad film. There's a lot to be had from watching films like this because you can see where it went wrong. You can see the flaws and um, it's great listening to the story behind it because something like this, this Blu-ray from Severin, I got loads of great special features and it kind of takes you on the journey of what he went through to make it and what he wanted out of the movie and it enables you to create a better more informed picture of the whole uh sorry scenario but yeah you shouldn't apologize for renting this it's good fun and finally uh people do apologize to me quite regularly for renting cats and so they should do Looking at the clock, and I think we just have time to squeeze in a Sleeping Giant section for this week. Three films. Three films uh, that um, never rent out. Nobody takes them, but they're all amazing. Uh, so if you're passing, if you're a customer, or if you're just really into films, then maybe you should check them out. The first one isn't available in this country on dvd it's never been available past vhs you can see it on streaming but you have to subscribe to yet another streaming service uh, and it's the um chevy chase guilty horn film foul play a brilliant thriller i know chevy is genuinely reg generally regarded as a sort of slapstick comic type of actor but this is a thriller and he's really good in this and he plays a good romantic lead um i think it's one of his best films alongside Fletch uh, and it definitely deserves uh, a bit of a better release in this country because that would be great to see but if you haven't seen it then I must recommend it it's great fun and the albino character is absolutely terrifying as a kid it used to give me sleepless nights next up it's another one from Network uh, the label I mentioned before who went under last week uh, uh, last week last year um, you can't get this anymore it's fetching for crazy money on eBay and such like uh, and it's one of my favorite films of all time uh, well definitely in my, in my top 10 it's a musical which relating to last week's uh, trauma section where I mentioned Poltergeist I must clearly have a thing about musicals which is is, is permitted um, and it's a musical about snooker are you still there? Uh, <laughs> And it's great. It's called Billy the Kid and the Green Bay's Vampire. It's directed by the brilliant uh, British director Alan Clark, who of course made Scum. Uh, Phil Daniels is in it. And Alan Armstrong is just genius, who, who plays the uh, vampiric Ray Reardon style character. It, it's an amazing film. It's funny. It's socially apt. And it has the, a soundtrack that is just astonishing with so many great songs that are brilliant uh obviously this isn't many people's cup of tea but this is the best snooker themed musical that you're likely to see trust me finally not a film tv series don't stop many tv series but i do stock the ones that have got maybe cult status that aren't easy to buy that kind of thing this is one of those again sound like a broken record it's not available for streaming uh, and also certainly in the UK this edition this medium rare box set that was released is now our print and it's fetching a fortune a great show uh, created by Glenn Morgan and I want to say James Wong is that correct I hope so uh, who created the Final Destination franchise and they also had a massive part to play in the X-Files series uh, it's great. It was meant to run for many, many seasons. They cancelled it after one, a uh, kind of typical Fox thing. And it's very, very good. I'm not a sci-fi person by any means. But this is one sci-fi series that I could really, really um, enjoy. Great storyline arcs, great characters, uh, great writing. And it, it's really, really good. So if you fancy a series for a change then that is definitely one to recommend. We're out of time. That's it. It's over. I'm always of the mindset that I don't want to make these things too long. 
time is of a premium to us all. So I kind of want to aim for the 20, 25 minute sweet spot. So everything that we haven't had this week, we'll have again next week, label spotlights and stuff like that. But thank you anyway for tuning in again. What is wrong with you? Um, don't forget, follow on Facebook, Snips Movies, Instagram, Snips Movies. You can follow me if you really want to on the app formerly known as, as Twitter. Uh, you can find me at the Dave Wayne. And if you can, if you can, subscribe to the channel as it's always good for the old algorithm. Um, but that's it for this week, and I will see you in seven days' time. <laughs>